expert Halal Mali sir. So Dr. Halal Mali sir is currently the associate professor of Malvi National Institute of Technology, Jaipur. Sir has completed his bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the Institute of Engineers, India. Master's degree from Punjab University, Chandigarh, and his PhD in mechanical engineering from Punjab Engineering College of Technology, Chandigarh. Sir has an experience of 15 years in academics and 10 years in aviation industry. Sir has received multiple research grants from Indian, uh, from Indian and international funding agencies, including uh, uh, BIG of BIRAC, BBT, ECR, EMR of district, DRDO, uh, NSF and industry. He has supervised seven PSP, 26 MTech theses, and has more than 100 peer review publications. He had set up. Uh, he had set up an advanced manufacturing and mechatronics, uh, mechatronics lab and founder of Cam Society. MNIT uh, Cam Society is a student-driven club dedicated to teaching and learning uh, uh, manufacturing technologies. Sir has also. Uh, sir, we are honored to have you in this session. Now I would like to give the platform to you, sir, so that the session can be started. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Gaurav, and thanks to the. MBM coordinators, particularly Dr. Baskar. Uh, it's really, really a pleasure and honor to be with MBM again uh, to all your participants. So without uh, moving before we move on to you know our presentation, I have a kind of uh, this is like, like now I know that it's third session, post lunch session. So why can't we have a kind of interaction? So for that reason, let me introduce to you with the schedule that what what kind of thing we'll be looking for. All right. So uh, Gaurav. Yes, sir. Thank you uh, for the introduction. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. sir. Very nice. So thank you, madam. And now let us thank start with so uh, all your participants. I think it's day three. And since your topic is your program is on finite element analysis, we have some application of it last um, around 10 years, particularly for some apl applied applications in this kind of material that is textile composite. So let us spend some time with textile composite, some time with modeling textile composite, particularly for mechanical behavior. OK, we will not be covering much about the experimental part because there is lots of literature available. So we have to carry out lots of experimentation also. But today we should be talking about the FEA of textile composites for this, this mechanical behavior. OK, so this is the these are the outlines and I have divided my work or rather this talk into three categories. Right, and this will be let it be four. So there, there is this first stage, the second trench. Let us see second part, third part, and last, more like an introduction to few steps. The fourth part, right? Here we are, and I request the participants if they can sustain themselves with this third session and try to interact through the chat. So uh, Gaurav and any of the organizer will be reading those chat to me and we will be able to uh, interact through those question answer session. Is it OK? Shall we start? Yes, sir, we can start now. Thank you, Gaurav. Now to start with what we are talking about is a material, category of material, because we know there are X number of materials. We had been studying. I hope I'm talking to all the fellow colleagues fellow faculty members and scholars, maybe some students also. So we know that there are materials. We can classify engineering materials starting from metals and non-metals, but say metals and then say polymers. And then of course ceramics. And finally, the, another category or maybe as you can call some category like sort materials, but we shall be talking about a material category called composite material, right? So within this composite material, we should be moving. What is a composite? All of us know the two or more materials 
having different physical and distinguished chemical properties, right? So we classify materials, particularly composite materials, whether they are metal based, whether the base or the matrix is metal or ceramic or polymer, right? So within metal, we are there are lots of materials like aluminum, copper, nickel, titanium. They can be the matrix material in which the enforcements are added. Of course, the enforcement can be in the form of a fiber. It could be particulate, small, small particulates like abrasive particulates. It could be whiskers or continuous like structural elements also. But we should be talking about here polymer matrix. That means we will be having either a polymer category in the thermoset or thermoplast. Why I call thermoset first? Because we will be doing dealing mostly with the thermoset materials. Okay. Another category which is there with uh, this composite materials is ceramic materials. This we are just doing for the sake of completeness. It could be like glass, cement. So those ceramic material could be the base. Of course, why composite materials are needed for the high strength low weight, high stiffness, and high stiffness to corrosion, and lots of lots of fatigue life, impact life, and thermal pro properties. So these are the reasons we should be using composite material. But we are now within the composite materials where we are, we are into polymer matrix. And within the polymer matrix, we would like to know, talk about a category of materials which will be mm, referred as textile composites. So what is polymer matrix based materials or generally referred as FRP, fiber reinforced plastics, FRP. So that means you have a kind of, this comes under this PMC only. So within the PMC, we have this category or like a bigger circle inside the bigger circle or small circle, there may be a difference or maybe overlapping circle. So FRP stands for fiber reinforced plastic. That means you, you reinforce your plastic by some sort of fiber material, okay? And that is a category of mostly PMC. Now this fiber can be reinforced in many ways. One of the way is similar to, say you have, you take some kind of fibers which are continuous fibers and then you imprint them, you, you know, there could be some matrix material, particularly say thermoset. Say it could be like epoxy, which all of us know. Now, this is one layer. Then you add another layer of this wool. We can call it wool. Wool of fibers. This wool of fibers. So this is layer by layer, layer by layer, layer by layer. And this is what has lots of application, we generally refer it as FRP. But what if we, we do kind of knitting to this particular wool and it is very close to what we are wearing the textile. So that will be referred as textile composite. So all FRPs are not textile composites or all PMCs are not textile composites. One category of this PMC or will be textile composite. So what is textile composite? Of course it is a PMC but the fiber reinforcements are in the formation of a textile architecture, right? You see there are lots of lots of applications of PMCs, right? polymer matrix composites, but within these PMCs, we, there is another category, which is probably referred as advanced, advanced manufacturing, sorry. The advanced materials, and those advanced materials will be Advanced composite materials can be referred as textile composite or textile reinforced PMCs. All right. So now, how do we differentiate or how do we further classify this? So textile is very related to what clothing we are seeing. It could be woven clothing. That means the fiber material, which is most likely in a in a in a either woven condition or it is braided. So woven can be further understood in terms of plain woven, or it could be like quill woven, so plain, satin woven, triaxial woven. So 
uneven woven but under 2d category but if you talk about the third axis taken together you take the angle of interlock interlocking you can do it layer by layer within the layer that means woven not only in x axis and y axis but in z axis also so weaving in vertical direction so you just see lots of materials maybe like your mats which are uh, used inside the door mats and all those they are all woven in a different different conditions very similarly it could be braided so braiding in this form so these are all architecture of the textile materials which can be used as a reinforcement in pmcs so that will be referred as textile composites okay so i think we have talked about within this braiding is also 2d 3d then there could be something known as knitted separately okay so these are the uh, very broad classifications of these textile composite materials now if you look at you can further look at this what we see here it can be unidirectional fabrics major fabric is unidirectional but there could be some some other element which is added upon it could be a plain woven just one like this one like this straight so plain woven it could be twill that means like i think uh, we all we all travel these days we don't travel but whenever we travel we had been traveling particularly on the road side dabas we find those charpais and all so they are in a different different pattern they are weaven, weaven together so this is more like that we will twill means you leave two and then this is a twill pattern similarly it could be braided pattern also this way it could be knitted pattern also so this is with respect to the reinforce which has been in the textile format okay of course within the reinforce within this within this you will be have having some kind of matrix also matrix so matrix is one part but the reinforce is in the different different categories it could be stitched it could be you know different angles particularly in uh, the the directions which you see here maybe a 45 degree 90 degree 30 degree whatever you and or even knitting category they all come under the category of textile architectures and textile reinforcement architectures from here let us take to this particular composite manufacturing stage or this this learning this is very important because how what what is the composition of it how things move it so the basic element is the filament the thread one thread one filament similar to what you have your brought now you this 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 filament is not woven together it is not done like this what is happening you convert this filament into a bundle because the filament is having some nano dimension very very thin dia see even thinner than your hair now you bundle those filaments and convert into a fiber right so a fiber is a combination of so many filaments so they are bundled together and that will give me a kind of from nano scale to micro scale so similar to your hair so those filaments thin filaments thin very very thin filaments nano scale filaments are bundled together to form the fiber now this these fibers are further bundled to form a yarn now yarn is the one ready this is one yarn this is one yarn the blue color or red color both are yarns now they are weaven together yarns are weaven and they form the mesoscale so yarns when weaven together is the fabric so when you look at their clothes that means the yarns are weaven deliberately i wore this shirt which is look like jet so you can understand this in this way now they are woven together and a fabric is formed now this fabric is used layer by layer and this way this is used layer by layer and then in between is your matrix material so that forms your laminate when you have the matrix it forms a laminate so once you have so many laminates you stack in a macro scale you can form a structure it is not that single layer of laminate is formed you can have multiple layer of laminates and a structure is formed composite structure can be formed this may be a useful product all right so i hope we we could differentiate so anything up to now go around let's let's have a very quick small introduction a small feedback <coughs> sorry so that 
Yeah. We we find that it is everybody is on board. Yep. Any 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 comment from the chat? No. So not yet, not yet, sir. But uh, huh, everybody. Those, those, huh, those who are listening, please put your chat in so that we we know that we are uh, we what we are doing is a kind of dialogue, not a monologue, so that it becomes an interactive thing. Okay. I I request to all the participants to please ask their doubts and have and have communication with us. Uh, you yeah, just put your yeah. yeah just put your, your questions in the chat box all right so here we are now you must be knowing that what we are talking about these textile composites have come up in the category of advanced textile composites or maybe some more some categories are referred as advanced textile composites and please do understand most of them are not developed by academicians but they are developed by different vendors so we should be understanding in terms of who developed what and what. just look at this this proprietary signature if you look at kevlar this is this one material of one category of material or one material type this is developed by a company called dupont okay very similarly let us understand what among the textile also there is something known as advanced textile composite that means further you talk about some unique category group of materials which will be Referred as advanced textile composite, high strength reinforcements are impregnated with polymer matrix. So, what is the idea these days happening? It is more like, you know, no this band, but you have this manja. We, during our winters, Sakranti time, you Rajasthan or Jodhpur, you'll have lots of kite flying. So, just recollect when we were kids, we used to have this thread which was not very strong. So, what was the idea to reinforce this thread? so some of the naughty students or some boys will be adding some kind of some kind of gum or added with some some glass powder and they will be making it very very strong or other its sharpening capability will enhance so that is impregnated very similarly here also you can impregnate it with what with your polymer matrix okay to fabricate some sort of advanced composite materials because it is not only that this fabric making making is enough but ultimately you have to make a laminate and then the structure okay so that you can meet the high end specifications what we see vital of those reinforcement materials so we will see that uh, this matrix is either thermoplast or thermo set so but majorly things we are talking about those reinforcements materials reinforcing materials architecture belongs to that only so high there are two categories of reinforced materials one is the high toughness and second is the high stiffness so if you look at high stiffness these are those fabrics or fibers which are like boron carbon or glass fibers they will have high toughness high sorry high stiffness on the other hand if you look at high toughness it will be like aramide or within this aramide you have materials like kevlar or tevron or nomex or this this material so which what are those there are all proprietary materials okay so developed by different different vendors at different different point of time for their commercial applications okay but we try to divide them into two categories one is high toughness basis and secondly high stiffness basis okay now advantage is if you look at this advanced textile composite which is being developed and money is being made by these vendors extensively they have improved performance with tailored mechanical properties this is very important you can tailor these mechanical properties that means you can kind in a kind of identify where the property is say for example if you need a even if you look at the pen or you just look at a sports racket or tennis or maybe badminton so we got a badminton uh, medal in this time Olymp in olympics so look at the modern day badminton rackets how how much force they are bearing and how much lightweight they are so likewise you need to identify those tailored property and optimum weight to strength ratio for that these advanced excel composites are very handy okay now we are saying here what the many of the products here you see are made out of composite materials but they may not be say if you look at 
this aircraft structure or the sports vehicles or maybe cycles or maybe sports utility vehicles look at this this golf golf equipments so such would we now have one uh, very genuine top class world class golf player but look at her uh, equipments which are used for playing the golf they are made out of mostly the advanced excel composites so advanced excel composites have come in a big way particularly textile composites come in a big way in sports but as far as automobile aviation they are yet to get established because still those conventional textile composites are being used i am saying advanced means textile here so textile may not be used but the other 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 materials may be used out of the composite material category okay but there will be some some possible replacement happening continuously based on the performance evaluation all right now if you look at this textile composite what we are supposed to understand we are further trying to talk about that they can be used in monolithic that means only a class frp can be used class textile composite can be used or a carbon textile composite can be used of course in different different architectures like twill and wo twill woven and plain woven and all those similarly a kevlar material can be used so what do you find unique about this this glass and polymer they are very good in structural properties their structural properties are excellent you can their structural strengths are very good on the other hand if you look at kevlar all of you know that kevlar is a material which is extensively used in used in used used for what purpose anybody would like to comment somewhere in the chat box this kevlar material gaurav not any chat sir wait not any chat so what i think uh, let in the people sir, write they are they are commenting for the voice they are commenting for the voice when the voice is low or what yes they are commenting voice is low voice is low okay so what i can do i can raise my voice for yes, that sir, i need no. eating more food right <laughs> all oh. right okay here yeah, is it it is is it better now voice and energy yes sir it's much be much better but the energy All was actually right. was also high so thank you for that inputs are very essential that, that's why we always have this closed loop control so thank you for that uh, but this is because of the time because i just had another classes and you know by the time you come to the lunch hour maybe 1:30 or so it, it, it's down anyway not a problem here we are so uh, i'll be a little louder so that you guys also have those uh, Uh, not the sleepy syndrome okay here we are what i was trying to ask is we all know that there is a material called kevlar which will be having wonderful anti ballistic properties or ballistic resisting properties may be used in where anyone anyone kevlar material i think it's very quite popular and i know that there are people listening everyone is listening sir sorry Every, everyone is, is is listening sir and so someone has tried ah uh, yeah where it is used someone Even? has done bulletproof vest bulletproof jackets yes where they are bear so that's what so likewise that means we have these three materials glass carbon and kevlar which has extensively come out out of this uh, advanced composite material category but that doesn't mean that all your bullets are conventionally being made out of textile formation they may be been they may not be woven at all simply layer by layer you are putting the wool and then having the the composite material uh, having the matrix material inside and then forming the laminate and the laminate may be used in jackets okay but textile if you do it there are certain advantages we will talk about it and their utilities we will talk about it the research we will talk about it very similarly so i use the word monolithic for this because there is another possibility say for example you are looking for a material which is used like carbon material for making structures but if the structures are indoors that's fine similarly if you are making a material uh, using the material kevlar only then it will be good for ballistic but what if if i have to make a hut 
outside and inside the hut some soldier has to sit that means the hut has to be having this anti ballistic property this has to also have the anti say uv degradation degradation property it should be having structurally strong high stiffness is required so in that case can we hybrid those materials can we can i hybrid glass and carbon together can i hybrid glass carbon and kevlar together can i hybrid my glass and kevlar together so that will be the another word used is hybrid textile composites okay so this is what is the, uh, the the process up to now okay this part is done now reinforced fabrics particularly when i say glass again so many categories of glass you must have heard a glass c glass e glass there are different different fiber or fabric categories which will be extensively used so this is for the sake of completeness we talked about the various forms of the glass fibers okay so a glass fiber is formed when thin strands of silica based or other formation glass are extruded into many many fibers those fibers convert into fabric and fabric converts into laminate and laminate is then converted into a structure so these are all various categories of the glass i don't think i have to put in detail this literature is available openly okay similarly if you look at carbon carbon also is the same so carbon is made out of organic poly polymers particularly this carbon carbon fibers are made out of organic polymers it will have as high as 90% carbon fabrics or of course you add some kind of pan process and then they are all converted into bundles and this way we have lots of carbon fibers in different different categories the sizes vary like 1k 3k 6k k refers to how many thousands of fibers are used in a single bundle all right so you know that carbon fibers are twice as stiff as steel and five times as strong as steel okay so this is again coming under the category of advanced composite but that doesn't mean that we are only talking about the strand here or we are only talking about the fiber and fab fabric part we are not talking right now fabric can we do some kind of some kind of textile formation that will come later so these are all basic properties the third category is coming under the category of aramide fibers so most of the aramide fibers they 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 are formed by liquid polymer blends that means you have some kind of say some kind of uh, polymers are there some liquid chemicals are there so those chemicals then when they are extruded in a thin wire form will be giving you these kind of you know different materials like kevlar trevron these are all developed by these vendors and extensively utilized particularly in the category of anti ballistic properties all right so this is for the three categories of three types of fibers which we talked about glass under the category of advanced composites glass carbon and kevlar uh, and aramide fiber so kevlar is a kind of aramide fiber all right now if you look at these popular fibers or these extensively used fibers are shown here in terms of chemical composition in terms of their grades in terms of their grades say for example glass is a glass c glass and their uniqueness in properties what is good for that say for example glass part is there glass is having low cost and of course toughness is low but stiffness is high similarly in terms of uh, if you look at the carbon high strength to weight ratio similarly high strength to weight ratio for kevlar also and a low electrical conductivity is low in case of kevlar right so these are the different properties of course you can see that the formulation here formed for glass and carbon and kevlar for fibers all right so this is with respect to the popular reinforcement of this this particular um, composite materials now or composite reinforcement materials let's call it this way so then third category comes at or the last category comes at why at all we need a hybridization so hybridization of textile composite so more than one type of this synthetic fiber so we all are calling them as none of them is organic they are all synthetic fibers so but they can be used in a more than one type of material can be used say for example if you use within the ply say these are all different different layers of composite material now one layer is made out of say aluminum second is carbon third is glass so this is referred as what kind of what kind of hybridization anyone 
anybody what kind yeah. of hybridization if anybody know then you can type in chat box yeah just think at so please try to understand this is interply that means this is one ply another ply so the hybridization is happening among the plies so it will like isbt interstate bus terminus so a, a bus terminus whereby which goes between the states so one state another state so this is interply hybridization please do appreciate this okay so there is there is reasonable work done in hybridization of laminates whereby laminates are formed by hybridizing one layer so the top layer are made out of maybe stronger material harder material the inner layers may be sandwiched so these kind of materials are used extensively in aviation components so this is interply interply on the other hand if you have to make again a structure say for example as i told a structure which is needed to be made a lightweight structure which has to go to somewhere maybe siachen glacier and it has to have anti ballistic property it should be able to withstand ultraviolet and so many other material other other service properties are required you will be doing sometime interply within the ply see you are making hybridization so yellow is nothing but yellow is what yellow is the color mostly for mostly for kevlar and black is the color for carbon so this is carbon and black uh, yellow and uh, this carbon and uh, kevlar both are hybrid together all right very similarly these are all different different plies if you look at so this is hybridization so further to enhance the properties you have even hybridized these textile composites so these are all various possibilities we talked about now if you look at this interply or interply so should we go for interply or interply so interply extensively products are made you will find some commercial products these days even tin sets are made aircraft structures are made interply has come a long way and it is extensively used in commercial domain whereas this intraply is still an area of research because when we talk we are talking to professors we are talking to research scholars we should be talking that it should be an active area of research so these are the in if you just look at the hybridization of the material within the ply that is intraply you could possibly form all together new kind of materials which will be which will be used for various applications okay and various application means those applications where things are already happening but those so what is the uniqueness what is happening so if you have some component if you have some product which is made by say non textile composites it move to textile composites and then within the textile it moves some part will move to hybrid textile composite what is the uniqueness you are able to enhance its properties so whatever products which are being made look at the applications are enormous possibilities are enormous whether it is a marine whether it is in optics whether it is a shelter like this whether it is transportation in sports or defense you have huge huge possibilities for this kind of material and a lots of lots of research input is coming in for this kind of material so that's what is we are trying to talk about now this particular slide only one slide talks about the possible fabrication techniques for textile composites whether it is hybrid or non hybrid so non hybrid i started calling it as monolithic though not the precise word but you can you can see that these are the various techniques by which this manufacturing can take place for these laminates one could be the hand layer technique second could be the spray technique whereby the the matrix is sprayed and then this wool or the plies are kept on it it could be vacuum based vacuum assisted rtm technology it could be thermoplastic composite processing like by this compression molding it can be by tape layer process this is possibly an automated process it could be cnc similarly it could be pultrusion setup you, you might have gone through and injection molding which is extensively used for plastic injection molded part but it can be used for this uh, composite materials also recently or in the last maybe 20 years or so which has become popular is additive manufacturing the 3d printed 3d printing of 3d printing 
based manufacturing of composite materials that is also possible that means you have a layer of layer of this layer of this composite material reinforcement material which which is again and another nozzle may be taking care of the matrix so this way you can build your part that means you can do the 3d printing of the structures using this kind of uh, technologies which are maybe uh, out of so many different technologies seven families of additive manufacturing well we started knowing these days seven family means which are those seven families which are category categorized under the category of additive manufacturing so we know that the most popularly so three of them are only for polymers which are those three so those three technologies are coming under the category of mvm material extrusion wet photopolymerization so this material extrusion is fdm one popular of material extrusion then wet photopolymerization like sls and third category is material jetting so mvm this is only for polymers if you have another seven four families both for polymers and metals that is again called the binder jetting sheet lamination powder and direct energy deposition so these are all again a full plethora of advanced manufacturing technology coming under the additive manufacturing technology so this technology is also helping us in developing these composite materials particularly textile composite materials that means you now know that people are uh, not only using these conventional techniques for making these laminates additive manufacturing can also help in times to come i also thought that let me just quickly give you some kind of vendors name in india not many are there raw material is mostly imported for textile composites but there are companies like kanako in goa nikol and hindustan advanced materials private limited in new delhi so these are the companies if you just tell them they can make your sam samples for you for the fabrication or maybe they are catering to industries also okay so this is what we have covered up to now in in the first segment of our interaction related to these textile composites where where we have not talked about finite element methods we have only talked about this domain called textile composites so any doubt up to now please come forward and then we can move on to finite element methods or finite element modeling gorav so there, there is no doubt, doubt. No, there, there are is no doubt in the comment section very good so now let's move let's move on to the next category and the category is the fem of this textile composite for particularly one purpose we are trying to see mechanical characterization only mechanical characterization that means what comes under mechanical characterization anybody you can put in the chat otherwise let me start with say what we measure by utm what for we measure in utm we want to know the mat new material we want to characterize the new material for its maybe textile properties in terms of the young modulus and all kind of modulus we get all kind of strengths we get similarly though it's a different category but we sometimes can measure hardness we then we go for so they they come mostly under static category then we go for all kind of dynamic categories eh? iodine impact test and all then we sometimes like to go for something known as impact test particularly high standard so they all come under this category of mechanical characterization or characterizing the characterizing the material so now the material here in question is textile composite and before we actually go for experimentation because experimentation means you need to make the material so a costly process make a sample as per stm or so then third category you do the testing because testing requires you to have these equipments high end equipments so can we do something by this fem which you are studying is a day 3 for you can we do something by this fem so that we can reduce the cost of this experimentation or if you can validate that will be fantastic all right so that's the core idea here going next this performance and characterization are the two governing factors so let us do this either by multiple experimentation or by multi scale simulation using fem so that's what is 
so when you do multi stage simulation we generally call it we generally call it modeling modeling and simulation and of course finite element or finite volume or whatever process we follow now best part will be you will be able to understand in various categories or various conditions the material behavior will be referred as material characterization now to start with when you want to model the material this is a composite material mind it composite material and within this composite material it is a textile material that means some kind of material which has been woven together now you have to make the model of and you want to do the fem of this under some say for example you want to do a testing under compression virtually or want to make a model so what is required first geometrically model model the material first make this before you apply the material property what you are supposed to do first make the architecture because we have seen lots of architecture under textile category and then you apply material once you apply material you next requirement is go for boundary conditions and apply some constraints and then of course apply the load in the directions which are required so you want to go for compression shear or bending or high strain rate or impact whatever you feel like this is the sequence which is going to be i hope i made it understood by a simple simple statement that first why these steps if you are doing for steel say fem for steel do you need this we don't need this we can straight way make the laminate and apply you, you can straight way make the astm sample and and apply the material it's a very very fast process whereas this requires extensive modeling then because every laminate may be different matrix is different so you have to model and you may need a separate program for modeling this that is known as material modeling and then of course you apply the boundary condition constraining and load application so this is the fem modeling steps generic step which will be needing whatever property you are looking for okay now here again modeling scale also people say whether you are working in a nano scale or micro scale or meso scale or macro scale please do understand these are different terms so i i wanted you to please understand because the papers will be there which will talk about nano scale modeling some will talk about micro scale modeling so micro scale modeling mostly is what the fiber level nano scale is the filament level that means those filaments are bundled as i talked in the previous class Uh, the, the i mean the beginning those bundle will be referred as micro similarly if you are using those filament and making an yarn well it will be meso scale and finally those woven are referred as fabric so fabric will be under, under the category of micro scale so this is meant by this scaling and those who are saying multi scale means that means you are working dealing from one scale to other scale all right so i think this part we have talked about now we let's move forward now let us see this fea or we can also call it two categories of characterization of a material one could be experimental categorization experimental categorization second could be numerical categorization so we are dealing with numerical categorization today not experimental categorization what we are dealing with numerical so numerical categorization is done by this finite element and for this particular material so this could be the sequence so that means though we can do by experimental by numerically we are interested to do numerical categorization using fea and then it will have some advantage we know to say because this is a, this requires lots of experimentation here we have lots of iteration sitting on a machine we can pc itself we can come out with lots of results and these are the sequencing what is the sequence first make the geometric model of the architecture then define material property section it assign the property of course then assembly of the sections because we various various sub section will be there you have to assemble it based the structure define the element types and then of course define the analysis type whether you are doing static analysis or dynamic or structural or or whether it is high strain rate analysis so with which will come under the category of dynamic only but within dynamic you can have say maybe like dma kind of equivalent dynamic mechanical analyzer equivalent or maybe like sspb equivalent right i hope you understood these are all the equipments 
as per ASTM, which will categorize your material accidentally, then direct mechanical, direct mecha uh, DMAs, mechanical analyzer, and then SSPVs, slit Hopkinson's pressure bar. So those are the vital equipment. There are, there are so many other equipment like gas gun and all, which will be categorizing. So we are trying to say we will, we have this accidental, we need not to forget, we have to keep it in mind. Based on this, we will be trying to model into this tool called FEA tool. Okay. Then, of course, modeling techniques are different. Load, loading techniques will be different. Boundary condition application will be different. And all this will be a job. This will be referred as a job. Now, once you have the job, which all these things, you just run the job and you get a simulation and then get your results. Results are in terms of whatever properties we get. So now compare these properties with experimental results. All right. So this is what we had been doing. But the tricky thing is we are dealing now textile composite. All right. Next. So these are the some of the textile composite modeling ways. So what are the modeling ways? We can do, do it by yarn, interlacing pattern. So that's woven, braided, or knitted. So this way you have to understand whether in X axis you take what, in Y axis you take what, and and then you model these elements in a in a tool which will be referred as geometric modeling tool. This is only an architecture. If you have added with this your matrix, so this is this becomes a laminate. Still not laminate. This is one layer of the laminate. Now, if you have so many, so many layers together, you can model into a laminate. Okay. Now, please do understand. We are interested to model not only not only this kind of laminate, but before that, we have to move into the yarn level lamination. And as I told, we will have to give these inputs. So, whether what are the yarn interfacing pattern, yarn cross section, how the cross sectioning is happening. Yarn width is happening, or height or spacing is happening, or number of layers, or this volume fraction ratio, because how much is the volume of fiber with respect to the matrix? So fiber volume fraction, those things are to be identified. All right. So this, these terms will be essential when you are trying to model this composite material, textile composite material. Now look at this. So these are all modeled in a free tool called TextGen, which is developed by University of Nottingham. UK. Now, in this particular tool, we are able to develop these various types of structures or architectures of different materials, different textile composite materials. And just look at, we refer it to the, 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 the web and yarn type. And within this, you can have various patterns. So this is what pattern? This is a two by two twill pattern. This is a plain pattern. This is woven fabric with unit cell, one unit only. So this we call it a unit cell. If you are given the property of Kevlar, this is called Kevlar. Similarly, if you are given the property of one, one as a Kevlar, second is carbon. So this is referred as CK hybrid. So that means you can model like this. You also have to specify the yarn thickness. You have to specify the yarn width, yarn spacing. All these things are to be specified in the beginning. And for this, you need to understand all these fundamentals. Similarly, you have to understand the yarn cross section, whether it is elliptical one, or a circular one or a rectangular one. And of course, you have to also understand the, the whether how it is going to, you know, what kind of path it is following during the knitting. So that means whether it is a spline format. So all kind of CAD geometries will be coming in here. So this modeling itself is a is the project in itself. All right. So now geometric modeling is one important part. And please do understand it is not a linear one. It is a no, it will have non-linearity. So what is required, I, as I told, unit cell. So unit cell is a new word given to unit cell. We generally stands for REV, representative elemental volume. One REV is one unit cell. You model it and then repeat it. Those, those, those replications are important. And of course, during this, you have to talk about these mutual inter interactions, OK? Now, once you have done that, the next important part is assign the material. So for that, you need to make a subroutine. Maybe you gen we generally refer it as UMAT. UMAT. So now, if say for example, you have your text gen tool where you have categorized, you modeled your uh, composite material. This is in Python. Python scripting. That means 
and we similarly if you take some another tool which is a solver say for example you take abacus now abacus is also in python that means you will have some kind of interfacing you can model using some kind of subroutine again using python coding so that you can assign the material properties based on the various principles of solid mechanics in various directions mind it not only young's modulus the 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 modulus of elasticity and of course in various values say for example 11 1 means what modulus 11 1 1 means what 12 1 means what in first is the 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 direction so when you are, when you compare with various directions various uh, values and you have this matrix code it in python and you will be able to interface with your material modeling and interface it right so those those values are kept in a umet file format and the umet so, file format you yeah there is a question by the participants yeah. you have discussed about the various techniques to develop the fiber and from polymer like injection modeling additive manufacturing so all the method give the same properties or not they won't give the same properties definitely they will not so the level of automation differs the level of uh, manufacturing cost differs and of course outcome also varies so initially whenever you make a make a laminate or it sample or maybe uh, the full fledged product you will have to specify what what technique you have to you have used so it is definitely not the same that's the answer so if there is a difference then they are asking how to simulate and optimize this method so so now question lies what kind of difference may happen so difference happens in terms of volume fraction ratios in terms of so every time we make a sample Every time we make a sample or a, a laminate, what is supposed to be done? We need to have its QC done. That means it has to be characterized. If it falls within that range, which is specified by ASTM, we will accept it. Otherwise, we we will not be able to say whatever result comes experimentally. We will not be able to clearly say whether the results are right or wrong. I think I answered it. Shall I move forward? Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. So that's what is needed. Any time, please feel free and ask ask question so that we feel that we are interacting. Okay. So what was the second category? That was the material molding, and you have to form a UMET file format, and that we refer to as job. So this is what, as I told in the beginning, this is geometric modeling. Then, then you can discretize it, and of course, material properties, assign the material properties. and you get a simulated result like this so under compression what is the behavior under tension what is the behavior these are all are stepped in a single single slide that we are able to look for it okay so what kind of architecture what kind of uh, even your uh, mesh discretization will give you different results so sometime it depends on the computational power based on this you will be getting your outcome results okay so here we are we talked about the generic this is the generic steps required for modeling textile composites by fem okay so just to get mainly for the mechanical characterization now we can talk about those case studies these are these are all different different papers these are already published so i'll move little fast here so that you can um, i'll uh, give those papers published papers to the organizers so that you can go through later and any time available to answer your questions but what work has been done let us quickly share so the key fem based findings of this particular group which is for my last 12 years or so we'll talk about it first is we went for the first category of modeling was quasi static compression modeling for plain view textile composite so you understand the textile composite is plain view and we wanted to know the compression modeling under quasi static that means it is not only compression that but it is under in the step manner that In, in a in a step manner when you apply the compression modeling what is the result okay based on this we get so first one was geometric modeling then you make your geometric modeling means you make your unit cell then you input your so next category is input your 
material properties. So say you took some material property from, from in, in maybe from some vendor. So you take the fiber density. This was a carbon based laminate units, uh, this will woven. And then it's mass and put those properties and make a UMET file, have the loading unloading condition, boundary condition, and of course you get your result. So when you, your model gives you some result. So this result is, say this model is giving you some results. You can compare it with someone else's result. So we try to compare with the Hewlin's model and this is what the result was. That means well, the model which has been developed by the student, in this case, Dr. Anurag, he, he could see that he could compare it. And this, this was the first step. So these are the results. So first, first category of, first category of laminate, which has been modeled. Second category, again, quasi-static compression modeling for this twill woven. This time it is carbon and epoxy. That means we could definitely get this carbon epoxy from the vendor, this laminate, and we try to model it. So in this case also, how many plies? Eight plies. So we were trying to, you know, be equivalent to what was experimentally there and what results will be there. So uh, this is again a modeling practice only. We'll, we'll refer it what sequence are followed. Same model. First, you have to do what? You make the, you make the geometry. That means with reference to architecture, then the material, then you specify all sort of your load condition, boundary condition, finite element, meshing, and then you get your results based on the solver. So in this case, what is the solver? Say solver could be Abacus or ANSYS or whatever solver you look by. So essential part is those properties which you, we got from the vendor. So it was more close to Hello. Ma'am, sir is not audible. I think sir might be facing connection issues. Hello. Mali Hello. sir. Uh, Mr. Mali sir, sir you are not audible. I think he is reconnecting. Yes ma'am. And there might be a technical or connection problem. Yeah. There is message that it's internet problems. We will wait for the one two minutes. Just wait two minutes. I'll
okay so we are back again and sorry for that power interruption possibly uh, then because of the power the network also went that though it was very 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 short time but it happened so here we are again a case we are trying to talk about what it is this is compression molding of this 2 by 2 twill woven fiber textile composite so what we see here you form the unit cell unit cell is formed its geometries are done now length width thickness you identify you all the input in terms of yarn spacing yarn width fabric thickness and then move forward try to identify the material properties so look at the material properties these are the various material properties for this particular material in this case again the commercial material carbon yarn and you input the material so these material properties you sometimes get from the vendor you sometimes get from the some some of the research papers also you can identify because they refer to that particular material if you happen to use the same material you can compare that and then predict predict and also tell the world that what kind of number of how many elements you are used how many nodes you are used and of course you get your result output in this way now what you are seeing here you are seeing a comparison you you can see the comparison of various various work which have been done with respect to various energy levels are are then those kind of simulation results you can see so in terms of uh, compression molding that has been that has been done for the twill 2 by 2 carbon laminate now moving next this is for another property that is for shear molding when i look at the shear molding again for a woven fabric textile composite that means the loading will be different it won't be compression or tensile but it will be in a so what is shear shear is the load applied what is the so if i uh, if somebody has to a ug student has to learn about the shear modeling that means he or she has to first understand the 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 kind of loading which is happening in shear so say for example what is the application say i have this this laminate of mine i am trying to pull it so the resisting area is this so, so resisting area if it is the load applied is perpendicular to the resisting area we generally refer to as normal stresses so both tensile and compression comes as normal but if the load applied is parallel to the resisting area it will be referred as shear so let us see the shear modeling so shear modeling also in terms of same phenomena you have to form the unit cell whatever you identified so what you identified you identified a unit cell of plain weave and identify of, of course your if you have plain weave or the uh, five harness set in whatever you identify you identify that so this is wrongly written i think this is a plain weave moving next you identify geometrically model next step is material definition so again you identified your material say 3 t 300 carbon yarns having these properties having these further properties in terms of the, the view property taken from this data and finally you compare with various energies what is your outcome or you can whatever results you got you can compare it with very other results okay so now look at this is the initial stage the load condition the slipping stage the locking of yarns and finally out of plane buckling so this way you can you can identify that what will be the behavior of your laminate textile composite laminate when you are trying to load it under shearing okay so that is the result which has come up finally another case Say FE simulation of a hybrid material. In this case, I, up to now I was not taking anything hybrid. It was either carbon, mostly carbon only. Now, but in case you take hybrid, say carbon and Kevlar, and that to interply, not interply, interapply, intra. That means within the ply. Interapply, interapply. Inter is between the plies, but within the ply, if you talk about, that means one of them may be carbon, another. another fabric could be another could be kevlar so carbon kevlar within the ply you have laminated and within the ply you have hybridized so in this case what will be the property so again you are trying to get it into compression molding and look at so various categories you can not only see see it is like a molding 
so you can see kp ckp p is the plane k is the kevlar whether you have made it hybrid whether it is a twill so carbon kevlar twill or carbon kevlar twill so various properties so why i am trying to tell you here is now once you have this much of knowledge of twill, dealing with your tool software and properties now you get a confidence you can compare various materials this is not at all possible or if you are doing it by accidentally it takes lots of lots of time and lots of lots of resources so what i have done i wanted to know under compression what is going to be the behavior so look at this if you just compare displacement in compression mode compression loading you just look at this is the displacement in kp and this is the displacement when the the k has been hybrid with carbon so that means displacement has been reduced similarly this is the plain one now if you look at the twill this is the reduction in displacement similarly you look at strain energy this is the enhancement in the strain energy when you try to hybridize it so i think now you appreciate why this modeling and simulation is important in this kind of research why it is important because here in this particular hybrid world you have done lots of lots of faster work and you can predict and that prediction can be related to your experimental also that becomes your you you tweak with the input parameters and get the results and try to compare with the experimental that becomes your fantastic work so this part is done this particular one slide talks about only the fem simulation of various hybrid materials and i think this this makes you a a kind of a relation that we can form with uh, through this uh, fem modeling now very quickly let us see i forget everything i want uh, model uh, the matrix material i'll simply go for the fabric only that means i have this ck is it twill ck hybrid plane so i'll take only the only the reinforcement try to compress it in utm and try to identify the various properties right similarly i'll also model it and have the experimental and model comparison so this work is much more credit worthy in terms of whatever work you are doing modeling it has can you compare it with your own experimentation so this is the experimentation part compression setup similarly this is the modeling part now compare it so you find your laminate you as per acm standard you identify this is not laminate this is simply the the yarn level the various yarns are found and you then compress it of course this flow chart talks about this and get the properties similarly then you try to model it this is mind it without matrix so this kind of modeling is done and then compress it find the result compare it so what you see this is the modal prediction this is experimental this makes some sense the scholar pragati uh, who, who she will be graduating soon her model is trying to tell that whatever fem she has used and model it this is well in trend with the the experimental results okay so now this was without the matrix now someone can do with with the matrix and the work is on and on and on so this is what i am trying to force upon that we can compare it so those those studies can be done in terms of what what happens when you just simply take only say for, for example kevlar only so what are the various zones of failure with respect to compression modeling and how they are predicted in terms of in terms of failure here in model okay so that makes that uh, the experimental cases completed so this is the team of uh, this composite material textile composite material research starting with anurag who was joined i think in 2010 and now he is working as a faculty in delhi now pragati will be graduating soon she is the one who has done in fabric uh, this uh, some of the hybrid work similarly pawan sharma is again a jrf and doing some work in textile composite only with the, with the pandit project these two scholars such subham and vaibhav subham graduated this year and vaibhav will be continuing 
with the similar modeling stuff. Okay, so this is the team. These are the publication which I refer to and numbered. So uh, anybody who is interested, what work you are related to, you, you can be shared with any of the content. Okay, and then some of the images which we took from the references. Here we stop with this this particular discussion. If you, time permits, I'll go for some some kind of fabrication and characterization facilities. What I have in my group, as uh, it's over 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 to the organizer for that. Excuse me. Sir, I think there is a no question from the participants on the chat, so you can explore. All right, madam. Thank you. But uh, those participants who are interested to ask anything, please do write in your chat box. Meantime, let me tell you that. Uh, very, uh, for the past two, three years, we have been supported by uh, a funding agency uh, called DRDO. And lots of work has been partly done with them. And we are trying to also tell that uh, how these structural facility, this, this, this kind of material can be used for advanced structures, maybe various applications within the domain. And of course, uh, that, that, that part of the work I, I referred with is, belongs to this. As far as uh, experimental facilities are concerned, out of this particular project, this is some, one of the uh, participants asked about this fabrication facility. So these are the various various ways by which you can make your laminate. This is VRTM setup to which the, uh, the laminates are made. This is what you are seeing is the laminate made for various reinforcements for carbon, Kevlar, hybrid, non-hybrid. And the matrix is in the epoxy form. Then these are all various samples which have been fabricated. So then we submit the results to any general or maybe to an industry. What they want is how do you have quantified, how you have qualified your sample. So this qualification is important in terms of whether the volume fraction ratio is within the range, whether there is a void ratio. Those things are to be 